Uh, so this question is kind of weird. Uh, if you're stuck on this, that's totally understandable. It's worded really strangely. It's a weird kind of graph. Um, and so it may not make a lot of sense to you. For other people, though, you're, you look at this and this makes total sense. This is actually really easy. In fact, there's not much work we need to do here. It's really just about understanding what they're talking about. So they give us f, which is this bouncy thing. And the figure above shows the complete graph of the function f in the xy plane. Great. I don't care. That is just nonsense math terms to tell me something I already know. I'm looking at f. I get it. The function g, not shown, is defined by g of x equals f of x plus 6. Okay, so let's just clean that up a bit. g of x equals f of x plus 6. Important. I got it. What is the maximum value of the function g? Well, you could kind of just know that if we have the maximum of f and we add 6 to it, we're going to get the maximum of g. And there are a bunch of places where we can find the maximum of f. It's any point kind of at the top of the bounces. So the maximum happens multiple times. So when we talk about the maximum value of f, we are looking for what is the highest it goes on the y, right? So not the x's, we want to know how high it gets, right? And so the highest it gets is 2. So if that's the maximum for f, then the maximum for g is going to be 2 plus the 6, because that's what g is. It's take whatever you have for f and add 6 to it. And so in that case, the maximum for g is 8. And that's the answer. Hopefully you get comfortable enough with function notation that this question makes much more sense quickly. Um, function notation is weird because we learn it later in our math careers and it seems like a new thing. Really, it's just a new way of describing all the algebra and graphs that you've learned before. Basically, what happens with function notation is we get tired of calling everything y equals. So we come up with names so that we can better describe what we're talking about. And so we have an f and we have a g. We've named one f. We've named one g. f is graphed. G is in the question, and because they're named, it's easy to, to describe what we want. So that's how we get this answer, is just kind of moving from one graph to the next by following instructions. But it's weird. I don't know that there's like a strategy here other than just like be comfortable with function notation. So there are other questions. Khan Academy is great for doing more with function notation. You can just type that into the search, and they'll give you all sorts of lessons about how it works, and that can make something like this more understandable.